So, Shane, we've come to Monaghan today. Yeah. A nice bright morning for, for the middle Sun of December. Sunny Clonus, yeah. 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 So, um, no, you, you have a unique system here, I suppose. Yeah. It's a farm belonging to the Hart family. Yeah. And Ian and Tommy, basically. Yeah. So, maybe just give us a description of how long you're milking here and what you do. Yeah, of course, yeah. So, uh, Tommy and Aidan here had sucklers maybe for six plus years and they said they needed to make a switch or the farm wasn't going to survive, you know, paying off farm staff and they said something needs to be done. So, where Aidan actually himself, Tommy's son, he actually done a dairy herd management course, I think it was in Scotland or somewhere, and always had the interest in robots and dairy. And so he said to himself, right, Dad, why don't we go into the, the dairy cows? And Tommy and himself looked and they decided we're going to go all in on the flex phase and we're going to go with Lely and we're going to get our robots in. So they made the decision then in, I think it was 2020 or 2021, and they converted a fully indoor suckler unit to a fully indoor dairy unit. So they approached Niall and they looked about two Lely A5s, a Discovery and a calf feeder. So they went for that and then as time went on, then they went with the Lely Vector when they got the system up and going. So all they done basically was convert a suckler shed, dug a tank at the back, put in cubicles and said, we're gonna, we're gonna start to milk cows here. So as you can see above us then, they milk 100% flex phase. So Tommy and Aidan's ambition basically is to be the number one flex fit producer in this part of the country. That's kind of his ideal. Okay. He liked the way the cows looked. They were, they were a, a beef looking animal, but the ability to pr produce like a, a dairy animal. So okay. he kind of ticked all his boxes and every every farmer's his own kind of likes and wants. And he thought the flex was done enough for him. So yeah. so what's unique here, I suppose, about this farm, it's an indoor system. Yeah. Uh, they're indoor the whole time. Yeah. And there's a lot of automation here on the farm. A lot of automation. Yeah. So we class this farm kind of fully automated. Mm. So that would mean our feeding's done, our milking's done, our scraping's done, all by robots. And people will say, sure, what's the farmers doing? The robots are only kind of good as they are managed. You yeah. know, you go to a lot of open days and stuff, and Niall would always talk, you know, they're not going to run the business for you, but they will definitely help it. They definitely save labour. If we hadn't the robots, you'd probably need another two staff or whatever to get okay. through the amount of labor that it takes that the robots take off you and the robots take that human error away from the farm and too you're not worrying right if i got good staff to milk these cows are they going to be done right the robots kind of take care of that and then the information off the robots is second to none okay i can see exactly what cows are doing if they're sick are they ruminating everything very good so yeah. look we'll, we'll have a look so on site yeah so you install two robots first yeah so Initially, they went with two A5s in the left room for the third one, and they said, we'll go with the, we'll see how the cows milk, and we'll get up and running before we do anything further. So, two A5s, one to the right, one here and one to the left, so one central unit per two, yeah. and then your m for u stations as well, just to feed calves. So, once they got up, that there up and going, in uh, March of 2023, then they went for the third Lely A5, and things has never looked back since. The shed was at tight capacity in March time. He had he was making maybe 126, 127 cows, and the two robots were doing it. But you were afraid of the heifers losing out, so went for the third robot, and there hasn't been a problem since. You know, okay. there's never an issue with collecting cows. I I don't think I've collected a cow maybe in three or four weeks. Okay. All you'd have to be worried about is maybe one heifer maybe for three or four days, and she knows she knows what to do. When you come in in the morning, say yeah. what information you're pulling up so on the screen. So basically, my step by step routine when you go in in the morning, clear out an alarm. So you're going to look all the time on your reports. So the two main ones is your collect cows. So is there a cow that I need to go fetch? More often than not, there's not. And then we're going to go to our other health work list. So that's basically a cow with mastitis. Do I need to look at her at Waterman there? Will I give that to her or does she need a chew? But we try to stay away from the tubes if we possibly can. We shouldn't have an issue with mastitis because we keep the place as clean as possible. Cows are being milked when they want. It's all, it's all to do with what the cow wants, not what we want. So they have access to food whenever they want, access to milk. So if you have a, if you have a cow with mastitis, it shows you up straight away as soon as she's milked. And then before I come in in the morning, even I can look on my Lally Horizon app when I'm making the breakfast and I know what's ahead of me before I kind of do it. Okay. Yeah. 
Fine. So your it's a central unit here. So so the central unit there is yeah. for these two robots. Okay. You have your teak dip there, which runs for the three robots, and then you have all your washing acids and stuff detergents okay. in that central unit. So everything's very compact. You know, there's nothing. You having a big massive amount of building for three robots. If you were to milk maybe 140 cows, you'd have a lot bigger footprint for a parlor. Yeah. Definitely. And then we have our automatic uh, foot bath system then there too. Yeah. So, it, so it works well. She's going to decide. Yeah. So we've right. we've quite a lot of free time, so getting a cow in milking might be. How many simple. milkings? So we're milkings 3.3 .3 at the minute. Now, depending on our cows at lactation, we can change that. So, Lally would actually talk all the time. You need to keep looking at your milk access, but basically our, our optimum milking is around the 9.5 litre mark. So when you're milking a cow, you want them ideally nine and a half litres. Otherwise, it's kind of a waste. Anything less is a waste. Yeah. And you don't want any more, so about 3.3. .3. What's your average milk production at the minute? Uh, per cow, it is 31 litres. So at about 4.2, fat and 3.3 .3 or 3.29 protein so okay. cows are in good order mm. there we had a lot of ones calved in maybe this last six weeks and that would definitely help it yeah but with the indoor system you have always that consistency mm. you know you're not worried right my cows are gonna go way down in the winter and then we're calving all year round so you always have a fresh herd and that definitely helps because you have three off farm labor you need the place to pay you know People need wages and stuff, and that's 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 why you're kind of calving all year round. It's a lot handier to do one big bust, but you need to you need to keep the milk flowing, and ultimately the robots need to keep working too. What's your annual production per cow? Oh, uh, you'd be looking somewhere per lactation. The good the good second or third calvers we have nothing over third or fourth calver in around the eleven thousand liters. Whereas uh, say ten and a half to eleven. Then for a heifer, you'd be looking anywhere from six and a half to seven and a half, okay. give or take. So they're, they're well fit to milk, definitely are. Well, how much ration are they getting then? <clears throat> so it's all feed to yield? Or? It's all uh, feed to yield, so yeah. basically the cows that's producing more are getting rewarded, but the cows that aren't, aren't either, they're not being restricted either. So I think it starts at somewhere around the three kilos, so okay. we kind of feed these cows as much from forage as we can. Yeah. <coughs> so coming in here, you'd swear you were in Austria or Germany or somewhere yeah, like that. Yeah. So it's not your it's not color. your typical farm. Yeah, no. yeah. So we're not yeah. we're not looking at the black and whites. If I go to a farm with black and whites, you're kind of you're looking at yourself. What are these? But uh, yeah. these are what's called the Fleckfe. Yes. Most them, um, uh, most of them. There's one German cow, and the rest are all Austrian based. Okay. So Tom, what's her what's her temperament like? Temperament. They go up. They'll never know you. Mm. All they'll go over and lick you. They're not afraid. They're all, they walk about at their own speed. They do whatever they think themselves. You never, you never push them. They, look, they always have to be led. Yes. But they're, they're very placid animal. I have to say. Yeah. You have no issue with them kicking, even when you're working at them in the crush and stuff. You have no issues. Yes. That's one big major. Even at calving, you have no issues with them. You know, you'd never be afraid. But now here, it's farming. You have to watch yourself. But there's never, we've had no issues now. Touch yeah. wood. So. Yes. What age are you calving down at the first calving? So you, we try calving down between 24 and 26, Yeah. if we can yes. best at all. But yeah. uh, in Austria, they tell you more around the 26 to 28 months. So we're kind of, we're going with what the Austrians say and kind of adapting to what we have, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, they're a good cow now for throwing twins, I must say. They're big. They're, you'd probably have a 7% so twin rate anyway. Yeah, they have a high pr or propensity <coughs> to give twins. Definitely do. Okay. Like, we'd scan cows here. See, there you go. We'd have cows here scanned usually every six weeks. Yeah. And we'd, we would know you'd definitely have over the 7% twin rate. Okay. Definitely would. Okay. So bedding as we're... Bedding, yeah. Obviously, a good source for bedding is hard peat. So yeah. You're obviously you couldn't, your you couldn't get it any easier. No. So if, if we couldn't bed the cows and peats, are, who else could? So. Yeah. It's like the sand bed in the UK quite a bit. It's the same principle. It's just Ex a deep bed. Exactly. Yeah. That's just a deep bed. Yeah. Like our cell counts always nearly always under the 100,000. I think it's actually around 68,000 at the minute. So okay. as you can see, like cows are comfy, they're content, they're doing as they please. Okay, easy, easy, easy fix cubicle? Easy fix cubicle, easy fix aeration system. Okay. Very happy with them cubicles, okay. I yeah. have to say. One broke in two years, that's it. Okay, good. So you, you have an aeration system as yeah. well? Yeah, so that, that works out well. We typically only really have it for the summer, but 
doesn't do any harm in the winter as long as it's not too cold. Okay. Like it's, as you can see, there's very little cobwebs or whatever in that shed, yeah. you know, for cows to be in it all the time. Is it on 24-7? 24-7, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We probably could do with switching off, but we see no real need at the minute. You have a lot of gates then, the yeah. pull-down gates, are they, so these are, the pull -down. are they handy? You can get a cow by yourself, no problem. You're never in need of two people, okay. and that's what you have to do. Yeah. There's enough to do without getting someone else to help move cattle with yeah. you. Okay. Am I demonstrated there, Oshin? Yeah, so if I'm taking a cow up or a cow across, simply pull it down, latches in, and then other cows can't open it. Yeah. And then as you take her, close it behind you, and then she can't go behind you, you know? But usually, if you're going and getting a cow, she knows where she has to go, and she'll, she'll usually go for you. Yeah. She's a routine. So you've the... So the Lally Discovery. Yeah. So How many just, them one? Just the one. Yeah. We only need one. So that's just basically automated scraping. It's got two routes. So one route is our kitchen side. So it'll go in a loop through these two passages, charge, then do these two. So it uses a vacuum, just basically sucks the dung and releases it. There's a tank here and a tank down at the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So as you see, like they're pretty clean. All them cows are pretty clean. How often is it running? So it goes, it depends. It's usually every hour and a half to yeah. two hours. Okay. So it works like cows, there's never a build up. Now there's only a hundred of cows in this shed at the minute, but as cow numbers increase now, you'd have to make sure she's going. And you went for say two small ones here versus one big one, any reason? Yeah. No real reason, yeah. just whatever was put, bought at the time. Yeah. Whatever Tommy wanted and Aiden wanted, they kind of went with it. They're very easy clean, like just give it a bit of a twirl with your hand. There you go. Yeah. So it, it works. Your water's always clean. I suppose with the peat, you'd be more afraid of a wee bit more dirt around the cows' mouths okay. and stuff. So. Yeah. Okay, so you have a small drafting area here then, have you? <coughs> yeah, so on our system, I can actually draft cows on my phone. So Lally Horizon, cow 2161, I'll draft her and then she's automatically drafted if she's in heat. Yeah. Close down my gate and then you have headlocks, work okay. away at her. If you need to go to the crush, run over the crush. And okay. Yeah, it works out pretty handy. Yeah. So. You went for the brush as well? Went for the brush as well. There's one either side. Yeah. They do like it. Like, you, you'd notice if it wasn't going. Mm. They, they, you can get wires and stuff broke, but usually now there's no bother with it. Yeah. They, they make use of it anyway. Oh, they make use of it. They make sure they're comfy before anything else. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll not be long telling you. I see. Yeah, yeah. Good. Just be, looking at your slurry management here, yeah. then. So you you <clears> have your main tanks in there. So we have a tank either side of the cow house, yeah. and then when they get full, we transfer them to these. I think they were old pig houses or something. Yeah. So they just, just work. They're aerated again. Okay. As well. So yeah. Transfer them, and then on the other farms, if we're stuck for slurry at slurry time, transfer right. over. So. Okay. Yeah. So you're all the time moving slurry with an indoor herd. You're all the time can you get it right for your fields? And yes. You have no shortage of slurry anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> so your dairy here anyway yeah yeah so in here too we uh, change our milk sock and stuff so our milk sock here there's two change one in the morning then change one in the evening yeah we have a washing machine then to wash calf jackets and it's actually quite warm in here so we just dry our calf jackets so as you think like the cleaner you can keep things for calves the better and um, yeah there's no buffer tank here but we're not stuck for free time with the robots so we're all right okay and then yeah, that's basically it. You have all your washing up, you have your boilers, you have everything you need. Yeah, so when the, milk, when the milk then, the milk man does come, yeah. machine, he connects on. He where, connects how, on. Where is the milk going? Is it? No, the robots are stopped. Okay. So the robots okay. stop for 15 minutes to wash Fine. whenever he's, uh, whenever the milk, he comes out every second day, so. At the same time, typically, or? Always, always nearly at three o'clock. Okay. So yeah. it's before we need milk for calves and all, so it works out, it okay. works out well in yes. all fairness. Yes, good. So you have a nice tray there underneath as well. Nice tray there. I can actually change number one. So yeah. So there's no mess in the ground there much. No then. mess in the ground. Go straight in the sink. Yeah. You you hose it up in the inside of your sleeve there. Like you'd think maybe your sock would be a bit dirtier with the paint, but as you can see, like that's fair clean. Mm. Like you've no lumps or anything, and then hose in there, and it's not too bad. And then all the dirt's gone. You know, yeah. your floor not dirty or nothing. Yes, I'm getting slippy. No. So how do you know if there's no milk going to come there and I'll say? Because uh, your light's red, so 
the milk's going through number two at the minute. Okay, were you able to do that or does it change over itself? It'll change over when I tick it. Okay. So once I have it changed, okay. then your milk will start flowing too. Uh, yes. So that's kind of, it's foolproof, like you can't, you can't really do it wrong. How often would you change that? Oh, once number one is in the evening, number two is in the morning. Usually, it could go red nearly an hour after you change the other one. So they're changed once a day each of them. Like it's very easy tightened. You kind of know here if you're first in the farm, you go into the milk sack straight away, mm. and then if you're last leaving, you check the milk sack. That's Basically, how we work it. Yeah, you know, you can't. You have to. Whenever there's so many people on the farm, you have to kind of leave it that everyone knows their role. I know. Whoever's here does a routine at yeah. a particular time. So yeah. you went a Mueller tank. Yeah, Mueller tank. Yeah. And then that there used to used to be for when he was taking cattle to the factory and stuff. Yeah. It's just you could load your lorry down below and where yes. you go. Yeah. And then that's just again your narrow passage and yeah. your vector drives around.